Hey everyone, it's Jenny Civi. So I've talked about different components of the HVAC system, but I want to take a step back and look at why we have HVAC. So I talk about making people comfortable and making the building comfortable, but that's a very vague concept for engineers to design to. So what we're really looking at from an engineer standpoint is what's going on in the building? How's the building used? How many people are there? And then how do you offset that heat load? And that's called the load of the building. So let's take a few minutes to take the step back and talk about HVC load basics. So let's start with the load of a building. The space cooling load is the rate that you have to remove the heat from the space to keep it at your desired conditions. It's basically how much cooling you need to keep it comfortable. So it's usually for comfort, but some applications like industrial applications, it may not be about comfort. It might be about heat removal or something else, but I'm just going to call it comfort for now. When we talk about comfort, I'm referring to a temperature and humidity range as described in ASHRAE standard 55. I won't go into the standard today. We'll save that for a future video. But when we talk about comfort, people usually think temperature, but it's actually a function of temperature and humidity. So let's make a little room and look at what contributes to the load. So there are a lot of things that contribute to the load. Let's draw a little office here. The lights in the space contribute to the load, as do computers and other equipment in the space. If there's a window, you might have solar load coming in through the window. Or if the space next door has a high heat load for some reason, you might have some transmission coming through there. Or you might have heat gain from outside air coming into the space through doors or small cracks in the building called infiltration. Also, people have a heat load. People are approximately the same as a 100 watt light bulb. And although you wouldn't see it in the space, the ventilation air in HVAC equipment itself can add heat and humidity to the total building HVAC system. So let's slide this over to the side and make a little more room. You also need to know if the loads are sensible or latent heat loads. Sensible loads raise the dry bulb temperature. This is what we usually consider temperature, like when the temperature goes from 70 to 75 degrees. The latent load raises the water content of the air. Think of this as humidity. So now let's look at loads and see whether they're sensible or latent. Lights, those are usually sensible loads. There's no latent component. Equipment in the building could be sensible or latent, like coffee makers could add some humidity to the building. People are sensible and latent. Solar radiation is sensible. Conduction is sensible. Infiltration from outside can be sensible or latent. Ventilation is sensible or latent. And then your HVAC equipment is usually sensible. So to find the load of the building, you need to add all this up, and then you offset it with your HVAC system. ASHRAE has a bunch of tables for, and equations for calculating the different types of load, and I won't go into those today. We can do that in a future video as well. But to determine the total cooling load of the building, you just calculate the total of sensible and latent loads. Let's make a little more room now. To know how much capacity your HVAC system needs to have, you need to know the load of the building and the load equation. So the load equation is Q equals 1.08 times CFM times delta T. Q is measured in BTU per hour. 1.08 is a constant at sea level. CFM is your airflow, and delta T is the temperature differential between the temperature you're putting into the space and the temperature you want to maintain in the space. So if you add all your building loads up, you can calculate the airflow. So let's say that we have a building and we've already added the loads up and they come up to 95,000 BTU. 
and we know we want to supply 55 degree air and we want to keep the space at 75 degrees. So from the load equation, we know that CFM will equal Q divided by 1.08 times delta T, which is 95,000 divided by 1.08 times 20, and that comes out to 4377 CFM. So you need about 4400 CFM to handle the load of this space using 20 degree delta T air. So that's a quick overview of the loads of the building and the load equation. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel, and thanks for watching.